Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Med Vice. Now that I'm officially matched into my residency program, I'm getting a lot of information from them from HR about onboarding processes, signing contracts, and with that comes learning about my salary. So that's gonna be the topic of today's video. We're gonna answer the age old question from pre-meds, from med students, and from the general public, and that is how much do doctors make? Now, obviously, before jumping into answering this type of question, it is important to note that, of course, it's going to vary greatly depending on what specialty you're in, where you're at in the country, because that determines your cost of living. But one of the things that stays stagnant throughout all of this is the hierarchical system when it comes to doctors getting paid. And that is that interns and residents will make less than a fellow, a fellow will make less than an attending, and, and so on and so forth. So I think the big topic of today is talking about how much money a new resident physician is gonna make and how that compares to some other common healthcare specialties out there. Of course, it's obviously known that the doctors who have the less experience and the, the least amount of training are gonna make the least amount of money being interns and residents compared to the attending physicians who can see patients on their own completely without any sort of supervision and go ahead and make more money for the hospital. The interesting thing is when you take the average resident physician's salary and put that into an hourly rate and compare it to common jobs throughout the world like retail or service industry. And then also we're going to take a look and see how that compares to other workers in the healthcare industry. Let's go ahead and put the average salary of a PGY1 or postgraduate year one intern resident as an example. So it looks like from Medscape's recent report in 2019, the average salary for a PGY1 intern resident is $55,200. Now let's take a look and do some simple math and convert that into an hourly rate and see how that compares to other jobs around the country. All right, so let's take a look with our calculator here. So the average, like I said, was $55,200. And to convert that into hourly, we're gonna divide that by 52 weeks. And then the average work week for a full-time employee would be 40 hours per week. Now, that comes out to just uh, uh, midway through 26 and $27 an hour. Not bad at all. However, you have to think about the amount of work that residents are actually putting in. It's not 40 hours a week, especially for an intern. So let's go ahead and redo this. Same math, 55,200 divided by 52 weeks. But the cap for the amount of hours that interns work and often hit and sometimes exceed is 80 hours a week. So we're putting that in and we get just over $13 an hour. So it's very different when you compare this to certain other jobs around the country. Certain jobs, the, they, the starting salary for some retailers like Target or Walmart might be $15 an hour. Meaning that if you work 80 hours at, as a resident at the hospital, which is presumed to be a more difficult job than working at a retail store, you would make less money. Now, I'm not doing this to bash any retailers or any places that offer their starting employees a $15 an hour wage or higher. I think that is great. I think that really helps out people because it's still the national um, minimum wage is still quite low and does not rise as much with inflation. It does go to show, however, how much residents work and based on that work, it seems like they're getting underpaid. Now, when you're comparing a resident salary on a superficial level, just looking at the salary number itself, you you don't have a reason to complain because, right, that's $55,200 for the average resident. The average salary for all U.S. workers is just over $51,000. So, of course, you can live on that, but you have to put it into perspective of the amount of time it took you to get to that point to earn that salary, as well as the amount of work and the difficulty of work that you're going to be putting in. So, we just talked about how the resident salary compares to the general public of a U.S. worker and that average. Let's look at some other healthcare specialties, some other healthcare providers. So, looking at the average, uh, the average salary for a registered nurse, that is currently at $75,510, and you would attain that after getting your four-year degree, your BSN, and then passing the NCLEX to get your RN, compared to the four years of undergrad and then the four years of med school that is required to earn the salary of a resident. Looking at uh, another type of healthcare provider, looking at nurse practitioners, the average nurse practitioner salary in the United States is over $111,000. The requirements to get this would be the four years of your BSN and then getting your RN and then doing a, a different program, a nurse practitioner program, which could be two to three years potentially online. Again, I'm not bashing any of these other providers. I'm not saying anything negative about them. We're just making the comparison to how residents get paid versus how some of these other providers get paid and comparing the levels of training that they have. 
All right, so looking at another healthcare uh, member of the team, uh, physician assistants, they make just under $110,000 as an average salary. The education to become a physician assistant is an undergrad degree, so usually a four-year bachelor's, and then you get a master's, similar to a master's of nursing. So both of those are master's degrees, and then they are able to go and work in a hospital. So what I'm pointing out here is that physician assistants and nurse practitioners both tend to make almost double what a new resident physician would make, and they're coming right out of school as well. This has nothing to do with their experience level. This has nothing to do with how, how long they've worked. It's just coming right out of school. This is the average starting salary for these other healthcare positions. So it does beg the question, why are resident physicians paid so much less than these other healthcare providers when it seems as though they have more training? Because again, these are two mas uh, master's degrees in order to get to that point after school. And with residency, obviously you're getting your doctorate in an MD or a DO school. So you would think that they would have more education, more training, a longer path to get there. Why does the salary not match that? That question has yet to be answered. No, I sound like a broken record, but I'm going to say it again. I am not using this to bash, and I'm not bashing any of these other healthcare workers, nurses, physician assistants, nurse practitioners. I'm not saying that they deserve to be paid less, but when you do do the side, the side to side comparison between these salaries and resident physician salaries, and you do the side comparison to their level of training and their level of experience, I think it does beg the question as to why residents are paid the way they are compared to these other healthcare workers, significantly less than. And lastly, looking at the average physician salary, primary care providers typically make $243,000, specialists above that to $346,000. This makes sense because they have the most training. They've gone through residency. They are out practicing completely on their own, completely independently. So when you go from a resident to a f attending physician, the amount of training correlates to an increase in salary. However, coming right out of school, the amount of education does not correlate to the amount of salary that you get right out of school based on what we've seen from comparing resident physician salaries and that of nurses, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants. Why this is, I don't know. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below if you have thoughts about why this occurs. Um, but again, I am not using this to bash any of the providers or any of the healthcare workers that I've talked about. Just an informational video comparing the two, especially now since I have signed a contract that says my resident salary on it, and it is a little bit above the average for resident salaries based on my location. Um, but not by a whole lot. So, and I'm gonna be working that 70 to 80 hours per week. So when you do hourly, I'll probably make $15 an hour, which again is minimum wage in certain states. So something to think about today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you drop a like and subscribe, hit that notification bell to follow me along the rest of my journey, graduating from med school and moving beyond into residency. Hope to see you there.